Good morning all welcome back to the platform of Nandeep where we have started the program for answer writing i my name is dipti nair so i'm conducting the ancient indian history wala part for answer writing today's question is here assess the contribution of literary accounts of chinese and arab travelers in the construction of indian history so now while discussing this question first step of our answer writing is what to read the question carefully right here assess the contribution of literary accounts of chinese and arab travelers now here we have to focus some chinese and arab travelers while writing the answers right now start gathering the information in your brain first right it is known as what brainstorming right then we will highlight the importance of their sources while writing the history right and we will highlight the importance of sources while writing the history so this way this question will be tackled so let us start doing brainstorming brainstorming shuru karu ya right now here while doing this first of all try to mention or mention the importance of sources while writing history the sources are very very important because history is based on sources sources can be literary can be archaeological yes can be say uh, foreign foreign sources will be there religious sources will be there or secular sources will be there literary sources will be there so basically sources importance of sources shall be mentioned then division of indian literary sources now india is a huge country and had been the attraction for foreign travelers since ages so since ancient india in india there used to come the rulers the travelers the ambassadors the traders and they used to mention whatever they have seen in their uh, say travel log or whatever they have seen or uh, say notice in india they used to mention in their literary things right so these are known as foreign literary accounts then contribution of foreign travelers especially arabic and chinese because the question is based on these two yes and then foreign literature so you have to mention the examples also for that matter you should know the books or names of travelers also right in this we have word limit so we couldn't write all the names of travelers but some important name shall be mentioned in your answers yes so let us start doing introduction so while writing the introduction remember two things there shall be relevance of the uh, answer to the question irrelevant introduction lihaycha nahi ek and second the context of the question shall come in your answer only that is in your introduction only theek okay? hai then while choosing the words for introduction always remember that the context of answer or the context of question shall come in your introduction only third thing your introduction shall be connected to your main body it shall not it shall not be disconnected to each other yes let us see while writing history historical sources are very important for determining date chronology sequence of events etc right indian literature and foreign literature are considered to for writing indian history so while writing indian history we try to ma maintain the purity and say basically honesty of history writing and for that matter we consider both the literature indian and foreign literature to check and balance yes then since ancient times foreign traders ambassadors rulers travelers used to travel in india and the description written by them are special or are of special importance in indian history uh, or in the history of ancient india right so here what have we done we have mentioned the importance of sources then we have mentioned how these people used to come and we have mentioned the description written by them are very very important so these three points come in your introduction only then let us move ahead to the main body now while doing main body we our question has two parts chinese literature and arabic literature so let us think about chinese literature so while thinking of chinese literature you may 
रिमेम्बर सम नेम राइट लाइक वेन से वेनसांग हु इज नोन एज युआन श्वांग ऑल्सो राइट और शुमाचीन शुमाचीन इज ऑल्सो वन वन पर्सन देन फाइयान वॉज द वन राइट सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ शुमाचीन फर्स्ट वाई बिकॉज शुमाचीन वॉज द फर्स्ट वन हु रोट अबाउट इंडिया हु रोट ब्रीफ अबाउट इंडिया सो हिया शुमाचीन वॉज द फर्स्ट चाइनीज राइटर टू राइट ब्रीफ ऑफ इंडिया एंड हेंस आई यूज दिस फॉर फर्स्ट लाइन देन आफ्टर दैट वी गेट द इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट कुशान रूलर्स फ्रॉम द अकाउंट ऑफ पानकू एंड हानवे पानकू एंड हानवे दीज टू वर द ट्रेवलर्स टू इंडिया फ्रॉम चाइना एट द पीरियड ऑफ कुशान एंड वी गेट द इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ कुशान नाउ वी हैव टू मेन्शन द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑल्सो ना दैट वी आर गेटिंग द इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ कुशान रूल्स एट द टाइम राइट देन फाइहान केम इन इंडिया इन थ्री नाइनटी नाइन एडी During the reign of Gupta ruler, that is Chandragupta II, also known as what? Chandragupta II is also known as Vikramaditya. And why Phaiyan used to? Uh, why Phaiyan came here to learn Buddhism? Yes. So basically, he came to learn Buddhism. His book was Fo Wo Kui. Mention the name of book of Phaiyan also. Fo Wo Kui was the book, right? the this book sheds the light on social system and culture of gupta period right then going ahead wensang wensang is also known as uh, say here it is also known as yuan shuang yes this pronunciation is different in many books so wensang or yuan shuang came to india in 629 ce now in exam hall you may not remember this date so skip it doesn't matter but at least you should know at whose dynasty wensang has come to india yes at least you should know the dynasty of the indian ruler that this traveler had come to india fine now wensang have come to india at the period of vardhan dynasty that is harshvardhan was the king at that time and in his writing wensang even glorified the reign of harsha if you read his book right the name of his book is what siyuki he wrote the book siyuki after spending 14 uh, 14 years in india right then then it provides extensive information about the dan social system governance education system of india right then let us go ahead chao ju kua right Chao Ju Kuo was the China Chinese merchant and traveler. Then Yu Fan Shi is a book written by him. Chao Ju Kuo wrote Yu Fan Shi. Right now, it provides what? It provides extensive information about Chola Empire. Not only Chola Empire, but it provides the information about Chinese and Arabic trades also, and even India Indo China trade. Right. So the first part of our question have been completed here. now we'll move to next part that is arabian writer or arabian literature now from the book that is silsila ut tawarikh by suleiman an urban merchant and writer provides what it provides interesting description of the reigns of pala pratihar and rashtrakuta now you must remember the three part tripartite war or struggle for kannauj right where pala pratihar and rashtrakuta were the parties to this right at that time silsila ut tawarikh had been written by suleiman this is one then ibn khurdabade or khurdadabe uh, was the arab scholar right ibn khurdadabe has written the book kitab ul masli ul mamlik right so this is his book and it described what it described the seven castes in india right even even al baruni al baruni was the very very important person because it has been asked in your exams many time right so al baruni had written the book kitab ul hind also known as tarikh ul hind and he described the geographical condition of india as well as trade routes sea trade routes or sea routes to the uh, trade that is important for trade in india right then indian tradition geographical condition social structure have been mentioned in this book very deeply and honestly now if 
analyzing all these things we will come to the conclusion and what will be the conclusion conclusion will be all these details help us right to understand the authentic nature of indian society first because the honest writing has been considered while developing history in india because we are checking and balancing the fact from different different sources yes then we understood the system of than government even we understood the religious beliefs traditions while writing history right it also helps in simplifying the complicated task of date writing and scheduling because it doesn't overlapping each other or overlap each other because we are checking many sources while writing one fact right here you can take the help of many books and many writers if you remember the names right for example say uh, this one tabakat e nasiri you can see the name of him also or even you can mention the name of strabo you can mention the name of pliny right even you can mention the name of megasthenes who wrote indica right even uh, say we have already mentioned the name of phaihan then uh, wen sang these are important one and arabic writers arabic writers like muhammad ali who had written chachnama you can mention these names also in your answer for that matter you have to have the content of books and writers yes then this is our first one then let us come to the second question today so second question is the 6th century bc considered to be a turning point in indian society examine right so the 6th century before christ before christ means isvisan purva wala apan mhanto so it is considered to be the turning point in indian history now while writing history remember one thing always that historical things have will be change only on the base of economy so economic force is or economic development is driving force for all the changes remember this forever while writing answer okay wherever you will see ki this was turning point something ha must have happened to the economy whether it will be increasing whether it will be decreasing or okay so basically you have to mention these things economical changes must have been done here or must have been taken place at this time right remember this so while brainstorming for this answer while brainstorming right we will gather the information first thing that had taken place at that society was discovery of iron iron right iron plow iron x these came into existence and due to this what had happened agriculture became easy right cutting the forest and maintaining the agriculture land clean was easy right to furrow with the plow is very important right then here agriculture surplus because of this uh, say iron plow what had happened the surplus production could be possible yes farmers started taking surplus production with the help of iron axe and iron a uh, plow right then here economy was in the phase of development i told you economy is driving force for everything always remember this yes and economy was in the phase of development so if economy will change your society will be in surplus then what will be changed the traditions will be changed the condition of society will be changed the standard of living will be changed and competition will be increase yes then the important part was political changes of course the competition will be increased between rulers to extend their societies yes to expand their territories or even second urbanization have been started now why this is known as second urbanization because first urbanization was taken place at the time of indus valley civilization yes hence this is known as second urbanization then socio religious reforms have been taken place now always remember that if economy will change society will auto automatically change their conditions their rules or their structure right because surplus agriculture or surplus economy will drive society in different phase fine so this is what this is our information we have gathered 
information while writing answer now you got to process the information into your answer right so let us start writing the answer let us start the introduction first so here several economic changes took place in the 6th century bc that is before christ which led the changes and uh, change in the social and political structures of that period okay so here even you can you can draw a graph also you can draw a graph also now always remember that drawing a graph is not overnight practice yes in exam hall you cannot draw a graph in your paper without practice so while answer writing from today whenever whenever you will be starting writing answers you have to work on your graph also fine so here i will say economy will be the center point and due to this economy what had happened political changes could be seen due to this political changes your society will be changed if society will be changed your religious belief will be changed right you can show this graph like this that entire things will be changed due to this economic change you can use your creativity also to uh, show this graph right then going ahead then going ahead even here in the main body you will say the economic changes had been seen right the widespread use of iron tool in the 6th century bc boosted agriculture and agriculture surplus could be seen in economy yes due to this what had happened it boost the craft the trade and the politics also along with the politics society also get a new dimension from it at the same time a new material culture emerged cities started expanding and develop hence it is called second urbanization now due to increase in production of agriculture the surplus economy came into existence yes the standard of living of people have been changed and with the change in standard of living the society started expanding yes the area of society is started expanding and now people started shifting themselves from the plains of ganga yamuna to the northeast area or northeast plain or plain of northeast right then due to use of iron plow new agriculture system was resulted into surplus production which paved the way for urbanization by providing support for the activities like handicraft trade and commerce later that cities emerge as political centers of political centers of mahajanapada right so gram become jan hai na and jan become janpad janpad become mahajanpad so it was economical development the most important development that could be seen at this time was socio religious reforms right due to the surplus agriculture the importance of animal husbandry also paved the way yes and now the importance of animal husbandry could be seen in your society and hence to abolish the practice or to prevent the practice of sacrificing animal was very important and now there was the demand of new religion was which was based on non violence and hence you can see there were some religions that took place at this time there were 62 sects sects right 62 sect um, say established at this time but only five survived out of it out of which two become popular yes so which two jain and buddha religion jain and buddha religion right so basically the emergence of jainism and buddhism was driven due to this economic development yes then the then you got to mention about the socio religious reform in your answer i mention here you will see the see in the pdf then we'll go ahead to the conclusion so what will be the conclusion these changes occurred in 6th bc laid the foundation of peaceful civilized and developed generation for upcoming posterity right what do you mean by posterity for future generation 
Yes. So basically, this is your answer. I hope this program is useful for you people. If yes, then let me know in the comment section and let me know if you start writing the answers of Ancient India. Thank you and stay connected for more updates.